Here we go, Hypno Junkies. It is time for what is probably the conclusion of Chaos Head Noah. I say conclusion. I think we're just on track for our first real ending. This may end up going a little bit longer. I don't know how long until the ending, but I have a feeling it won't be enough to fill two more episodes. I have a feeling we're going to finish it now, and then we're going to go back and do the other stuff. I did take a quick peek at how long it took other Let's Players to finish Chaos Head Noah after they got the ending I got. I didn't really look at the videos, I just looked at playlists and judged from the titles how far into the game each video was. It looks like we'll have another... I'd say we're like two-thirds of the way to the actual end of the game by getting this ending. Maybe three-fifths, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I'm hoping the endings aren't too long, maybe two episodes each. I feel like this, the episodes or the endings in Steins Gate would have been only one one-hour episode each for each of the characters. So maybe these are a little bit longer. I'm not too sure. But we'll, we'll feel it out. We'll see how it goes. I will say one other thing. I don't think I had a chance to mention this in uh, one of the other episodes earlier. But something else that occurred to me also was when we started talking to a Shogun whose name was actually Shugun. And I was like, why is this a typo? I think Shugun is Sua and Shogun is Shogun. So when Shugun was talking to us, it was Sua trying to manipulate us, like getting us on the roof of Ofront and things like that. I still don't know why that is though. Why did Sua try to get me to get a D sword? I guess maybe it's got something to do with Genichi and how he was talking about how he was trying to get Takumi to do certain things, to develop his powers, to awaken, something along those lines. Probably, possibly, maybe? That'll need a little bit more explanation, but I just wanted to flag up that fact that whenever we're talking to Shugun, that was probably Sua, and that's why that typo was there. He's like, damn, this username's been taken. Oh, well. Speaking of usernames being taken, I tried to make a Neidhart <laughs> in Guild Wars 2. I tried to make Neidhart of Base Lord and a bunch of other stuff. The names were either too long or taken, so I'm disappointed. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, last episode, we uh, took the harem route, literally. We went on a route that took us through a harem, and uh, we sliced that harem up good. So I guess we're going to see if we can rescue Remy now. Let's go find out. And after slicing up that harem, I started walking through the dark tunnel once again. And then I got flashbanged. I ended up at a dilapidated building near Shibuya Station's east entrance. The surrounding scenery was dotted with partly or entirely collapsed buildings, leaving the building here as the sole intact survivor. What a coinky dink. On it was the dome of a rooftop planetarium that had closed down some years back. I can't imagine that there's a lot of property that doesn't get used up in Shibuya quickly. That seems like prime real estate, but anyway. Wheezing my lungs out, I descended the deserted stairway to the top floor. I'd made my way through the unattended lobby into the planetarium before I took a breather at the gargantuan device that had jumped into my sight. It was Noah too in all its majesty, surrounded by a chilly air robbing me of my warmth. A piece of art stood beside Noah, too. Is it, uh, is it a Remy tableau? Demi. Uh, it, it is. Wow, okay. I wouldn't have talked about her as art. Remy affixed to the art piece. Oh, you're in the, uh, you're in the Nanami cross. Remy affixed to the art piece slowly raised her head at my voice. Yeah, you're not going to be happy that we're here. Our eyes met. Her eyes shot open, yeah. Who designed this crucifixion thing? This does not seem practical. Why? Why? I'm here to save you. Her eyes began to swim. Idiot, Baka! You Baka! You're such a Baka! She shook her head sadly. Getting yourself hurt so badly. Yeah, we got pretty wrecked by the, the Saratan squad. Pushing yourself so hard. 
Even though I told you to wait for me. Waiting for you does not seem like it would have done much good. Also, I don't think your left arm is supposed to bend like that. I'm just saying. Either you got messed up or the art team has some explaining to do. Why? Because I've fallen in love with you. I'm in love with you, Remy. But I couldn't say that out loud. Where's Genichi? I couldn't say anything heroic like, I'm here to save you because I'm in love with you. Not with how I was. Not with me covered in blood and a completely flattened arm. My current state was as far from Prince Charming as humanly possible. If I said something like that now, I'd probably look creepy as hell. That'd have put me closer to a stalker than anything, really. If I spilled my guts to her in some speech that didn't let her get a word in, it would have just put her way off. Is this our priority right now, my man? She was going to live, and I was going to die. Having some dead man walking convey all his feelings on a whim would have left a horrible taste in her mouth. So I bottled it all in. I want to give this back. Remy, what are we giving back? My right hand was still weak. It was the hand I'd been using to hold my D-sword. Desperately forcing my fingers to move, I reached inside my jacket pocket and pulled out a handkerchief. You're giving back her handkerchief? That's what we're here for? That's your excuse? It was colored a gentle vermilion. Whether that was its original hue or due to my blood staining it, I didn't know. I hope you washed it after the vomit incident. Remy had given it to me, though its floral aroma had long since expired. That handkerchief was one of several precious memories she'd given me. Genichi's just going to let this ride? I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to destroy Noah too. You should have just thrown your sword at it the instant you got in here. And I'm going to give you back your handkerchief. That was all I was capable of doing. And if I managed to achieve it all... I could die with no regrets. Besides, there wasn't much else I could do. In my mind, every sense of mine had gone numb a long time ago. I imagined that the reason for that was because the pain was so severe, my brain had no choice but to start blocking the sensations transmitted by whatever nerves were responsible. I could barely move. My arm continued to bleed. My vision was blurry. I was incredibly cold. I had a feeling that if I wasn't careful, I'd lose consciousness right then and there. Taku. Taku. There we go. My, you are quite the gallant one. A towering man emerged from behind Noah too. Narose Gidichi. Facing me, he clapped sarcastically with no clear expression on his face. There is, however, one fatal flaw present in your character. What calls you to action is rooted in bare emotion, something I would attribute far more to barbarism rather than anything noble. I had no idea what he was getting at. It took everything I had just to bear with the pain, so aside from Remy, I didn't have any brain power left to try and comprehend what anyone was saying. Taku... Run away, now I gotta slice this thing up real quick. Sacrificing the needs of the few for the needs of the many. Would you think that to be evil? I certainly would not myself. With the world on its current course, mankind will undoubtedly meet its end. By way of their own desires. Their hearts are beyond repugnant. The world is inundated by an unfathomable count of excessively self-serving desires. The society of man has long since collapsed, left now to wallow in its own decay. Each person thinks only of themselves. Crimes such as theft or murder rob all form of agency, yet this is of no concern to the individual. If you too awakened as a gigalomaniac, then you must have seen it, the true nature of the hearts of men. We saw a fair bit of that at Shibuya Scramble, yeah. I have seen it for decades, having awakened myself at a very young age. In the eyes of the Committee of 300, the continued progression of the Worldview Human Domestication Project is all for the heroic aim of halting mankind's self-destruction. So is this guy also a gigalomaniac then? Is that what he's admitting to? 
Because having the Noah thing would make you powerful, but if you're a gigalomaniac and you have the Noah thing, then uh, that's quite the boost, I imagine. Yet even that pretext exists simply to stroke their own egos. What I seek is something else. I once came to a realization. To breathe life into this diseased world, it is not the system governing society that requires changing. It is the hearts of all mankind. Thus, Project Noah came to be. Through Noah 2, the hearts of all men throughout the world will be bleached clean as their negative delusions are effaced. Effaced? Effaced. Conflict will be no more. The world will see eternal peace. Even someone such as yourself will no longer face disdain. Finally, his novel-length monologue came to a close. My body was on the verge of collapse, but I desperately planted my feet. At least I'd gotten a bit of a break. That was the only reason I was still standing. What you're saying is probably right. I hadn't really been paying much attention, but in regards to the future of humanity, he was definitely right. His ideals were entirely righteous. The villains often are. He was the president of a sprawling corporation, and his eye was aimed solely on justice for the whole of mankind. Me, meanwhile, I was a monster. <laughs> a virgin and a taku freak. Being a virgin doesn't make you a monster, guys. A selfish, ego-driven wannabe who just wanted to save some girl he liked and didn't give a shit about anyone else. Normally, that'd make me the bad guy through and through. The monster would then be slain and justice would prevail. But... Oh, God. I'm not going to lose to you. Why do you deny what is strictly in front of you? Just for my own self-satisfaction. My, how unfortunate that is. His gaze locked onto me. Nerose grabbed Rimi by the collar and threw her off the art piece. Hey, you're free now too. His right hand then stretched out in front of it. Oh, well, that's where that came from. Fair enough. And in that ephemeral moment, the once standing art piece found itself in Nerose's hand. I wondered why that looked so weird. Okay, that makes more sense now. Also, that thing is bloody huge. It was no mere art piece, nor was it a cross that existed for crucifixion. That is a weird-ass D-sword. Why has it got a thing in it? It was a D-sword. That's like ten D-swords riveted together. It was far too monstrous to be called a sword. Savagery. Gelidity. Another word I don't know. That which sowed terror. A contaminated gospel. Chaos. Thoroughly complexified. A blasphemy with which to desecrate. The purest of evils. Akin to the very gates of hell themselves, the hearts of those who gazed upon it would be wrenched away, luring them into an eternal aeon of strife. Now who's <laughs> just novelizing here? All that was negative in this world converged into one embodying its very shape. I gulped back all the saliva that had built up in my throat. That thing is like 20 times the size of mine. Despite everything I made up my mind, I fixed my grip on my D-sword, which was still bound to my hand with the cord. And then, I took a single step toward Noah too. Yeah, we're not fighting you, we're, we're breaking your little ball. Or more accurately speaking, I began to close the distance between Nerose and myself. Speaking of distance, he had an overwhelming advantage in range over me. Yeah, no kidding. I don't find myself proficient in barbarous activities, especially when it comes to crossing swords. Nevertheless, I must obtain your code sample. And for me to meet that end, you must be incapacitated. Towering over me with one hand, and Orose swung a D-sword even bigger than he was. Everyone's got D-swords even bigger than they are. Have you seen Kazapi? His strike was so heavy it felt as if it could have pulverized any known object out there. 
My arm was slow to respond. Even moving it slightly made pain explode throughout it. Even still, I forced it to do so and raised my arm. I caught the blow with my D-sword. Any normal sword would have been split right in two. And that wasn't even accounting for how unbelievably thin my sword was. It couldn't have been more different than Neurose's. And yet, my D-sword didn't break. Somehow, I managed to parry Neurose's first strike. My hand went numb. With my left hand pulverized, my balance on that side was non-existent. The stance I'd been holding collapsed. By the looks of it, he was about to send me flying. I just had to endure it. Remy, I could use a little help here. I connected with Norose's second blow. His recovery between strikes was way too fast. Don't be misled by how his sword looks. That was what I told myself. It was a battle of strength between a sword that was far too thin and delicate and a sword that was far too colossal and ferocious. Somehow, I was holding out with it. At least for the moment. You know, now that I think about it, his sword kind of seems almost like a, a combination of everyone else's. Like Rimmy's wings are on the edge there and the handle he's got. It uh, kind of looks like Kazapi's sword. Also, it looks like one of those things that you used to take corks out of wine bottles. Like you turn the screw at the top there to bring it up. I don't know. What? What? What'd we do? Oh, hey! Four times now. Four times had our blades crossed, but this time the position of Nerose's hands began to change. It looked like he was clutching the guard of the sword now. And then his sword began to writhe. Letting out an eerie noise, its malleable mechanisms groaned. Oh, it's a transformer! I love it! The blade's edge then split in two, opening into a pair of scissors that was then thrust toward my very chest. Hmm. Yeah, we don't like that. That alteration. Right then I came to realize it would mean the end of me. Remy? Remy, I need help. Assistance? I countered, swinging my sword down in front of me. But I was too late. Well then. Its forked point sank straight into my chest. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the plan here? You had a pretty good plan for dealing with Sua, but this guy's a gigalomaniac too. A callous smile formed on Nerose's lips. He loosened his grasp on the guard, and the colossal scissors snapped shut. <laughs> my chest, my ribs, and my lungs were all devoured. Well, that's not good. I desperately stumbled back. Mm -hmm. uh. And right when I did that, Nerose swept his arm straight across. My own fresh blood danced before my eyes. Pain spiked throughout my entire body. This is not going well. Even though my senses were supposed to have been numbed, I was on the verge of screaming out with whatever remained in my lungs. But even so, I clenched my teeth and endured it. My chest had been thoroughly minced. If not for stepping back when I did, he would have hit my heart. Massive quantities of blood continued to spray out. Somehow we're still alive. But, but not much. I nearly toppled over, but I caught myself at the last second. I can't die here. I didn't come this far just to die. I ignored Nerose. Instead of him, I approached Noah 2 and Remy, the latter of which was collapsed on the ground. It took every fiber of my being, but I did it all the same. Raising her head from the ground, Remy looked in my direction. Can't we just delusion the Noah 2? The Noah 2 is now just a giant popcorn ball. Okay, we're done. She was likely exhausted. There was no way her body had any strength left. As fatigue, or maybe just my injuries, continued to wear me down, my vision grew blurrier. I wasn't sure what sort of face Remy was making as she looked at me. I didn't meet her gaze. I couldn't bear for her to see me like this, bloody and beaten to a pulp. That was the sole minuscule bit of pride I had left. Even on my deathbed, that's where I drew the line. I advanced toward Noah too. My D-sword was already within range. Oddly enough, Nerose stayed behind me, ignoring that I was leaving him behind. That's because what we see is not what we think we see. But do we know that and we're just lulling Nerose into a false sense of security? 
Never mind, it's this damn song again. All of a sudden, a cheery melody began to ring through the dome. What the hell is with this damn song? Yeah, you may pass. Noah too towered over me. The sound emanating from it began, became even more shrill. Deep within all its majesty, I sensed something incredibly strange and enigmatic moving around. What does this have to do with anything? This song sort of incapacitated us the second time it played? Maybe? I don't know, this is still a mystery. I wonder if it's something to do with a trauma from our past, like everyone else has been getting traumatized, and we're just not aware of it. For a split second, I flinched. Albeit slowly, I managed to take a stance with the blade at my hip. I aimed toward Noah 2's nearly organic-looking tube-covered exterior and bulldozed it with my D-sword. We just stabbed Remy or something, didn't we? Oh, never mind. That was when I noticed. At some point or another, Noah 2 had vanished from my sight. And now, somehow, I was standing with my back to it. I knew for a fact that I'd just been trying to destroy it. There wasn't a single damn reason for me to have turned around. And yet, that was the direction I was facing. In the very center of my blurred vision, Nerose was the one standing there, not Noah too. Yep, that's gonna keep happening. I turned myself around, swinging my D-sword at it for the second time. Except, even though I'd fully intended to turn around, I hadn't. I had the will to turn myself around, and I'd even made the motion to do so. And yet, the end result was one where I hadn't actually turned around. I was hit with a wave of utter confusion. One might call it Noah 2's self-defense system. Nerose's quiet voice resounded from within the dome, pooling and mixing together with the melody of You May Pass. I don't know, I don't feel like I'm uh, getting the opportunity to do a lot of passing here. It interferes with the hearts of those who approach it, distorting their wills. With the exception of myself, none may approach Noah too. So you may not pass. When he finished speaking, he leisurely walked closer to me. Then, as if it was the easiest thing in the world, he raised the colossal D-sword above his head. I clenched my teeth. I'd lost a lot of blood. I couldn't think clearly. Even though I didn't have the slightest bit of sensation in my right hand, I shoved the pain and the fact I couldn't move it properly aside, and lifted it up in a desperate attempt to deflect the next blow. And then, the D-sword that had somehow still remained attached to my hand with the cord, was sent flying by a staggering impact. It tumbled across the floor, far, far away from me. It was astonishing seeing it off. And now we're back to the beep beeps. Fixing my gaze back in front of me, I was met with Renorose's sneering figure. And then, as if in warning, as if to urge my mind forward, the melody changed. Allow me to deny your existence. Well, that's rude. Nerose's stance told me he was already preparing to strike again. He was about to bring that sword crashing down on me. It was all too overwhelming, all too devastating. All too brutal. That was his D-sword. And it was coming down on me while I was completely unarmed. I had no way of stopping his strike. I was a sitting duck. Remy! Remy! Little help, Remy! Thank you. Yes. Remy forced her way between Nerose and me. Her soft touch enveloped my face. Don't kill Taku! I felt Remy's chest. She had wrapped her arms around me, almost like a tender embrace. She was protecting me from Nerose. I don't think you're going to block much of that sword. Nerose sighed quietly, lowering his sword. Remy had saved me once again, even though I'd told her I was here to save her. How fucking pathetic was that? Hit with a wave of intense frustration, I slithered my right hand onto her body and thrust it inside her blouse. Okay, that's rude. Taku? I felt the sensation of the coarse, warm underwear lying atop her skin. Is this how, how you're going to give yourself your second wind? 
Then I felt the pain of the gashes in my chest. Then the pain of my amputated left hand. Then the pain of my dislocated right arm. Then the pain of my dysfunctional lungs as I struggled to breathe. But the warmth I felt now, surely it could heal all of it. Oh, is that the plan? Remy's underwear, Remy's bare skin. Okay, consent, my friend, consent. What are you? <laughs> now Remy's confused. I, uh, sorry? Okay, I might have to put some sensor images up on this one. I tore off the buttons on her blouse. I ripped away the clothing that was keeping her body hidden away from me. Man, we didn't even do this to Saratan. Okay, we might have to put something up here. I exposed her bra. Why? What is the plan here? I grabbed her tightly right through her bra. Yes, we'll skip some of that. With my blood smeared right hand, I squeezed her. Okay. Where? I felt its elasticity, such soft, tender skin. Okay, I usually chide you for having some weird priorities, my guy, but you're taking it to a new level here. What's the end game? Remy writhed around in an attempt to escape. I grabbed her tightly and didn't let go. Um. Okay, this is... How does this do anything? This is not super cool. This isn't what I want, yeah. This isn't what anyone wants, including the viewer. With a gasp, I got off her. When I, when I realized what I've been trying to do, I was genuinely shocked. Yeah, so am I. Is this a delusion or is this a... Yeah, what is the objective here? Even though I'd gotten off of her, Rimmy tightly clutched her chest and continued to sob sadly. But she'd been protecting me. Why had I done that? Why the hell had I done that? Especially at a time like this. Why was why was I the one making Rimmy cry? This is a weird scene to be putting in here. This better have a purpose. <laughs> Whose face is that? Is that Nerose's? Truth is, you want to do some bad sexual stuff to Rimmy, don't you? My own voice echoed within my mind. Shocked, I swallowed back my saliva. What was so shocking to me? The fact that he was right? Because he'd seen through me? But who was he to begin with? Yeah, what's going on here? It was my own voice, my inner voice, my... Uh, true nature? Passing up on making her yours here, and Shogun's gonna cuck you. You really want that wrinkly little shit. <laughs> you don't want to be a cock, do you? What is the point of this? Then again, there's nothing saying he hasn't done her already. <sighs> My true nature continued whispering to me. Stop it. Stop saying that shit. I don't believe a single word you're saying. I couldn't cover my ears even if I wanted to, considering my lack of a left hand. Remy was just lying there sobbing, unable to fix her messy clothes. Just seeing her face like that shattered my heart. Where is this even going? I mean, there was a dark route in Stein's Gate, too. But, uh... What is... Why is this here? And don't give me any of that hollow ass it's okay if she doesn't look, love me back bullshit. So this is his face? This is Takumi's face? Why? Nurose doesn't seem to take issue with sparing the time to let you at her. What is the purpose here? I, I can take some guesses, but I'm gonna keep them to myself for the moment. Let's just get through this here. Besides, I'm about to die anyway. Who gives a rat's ass if she holds a grudge? I say die doing what I want for a change. <sighs> okay, you're done, you're done. Come on. It was just a delusion. Something that was a bad habit of mine. This is bad even for you. Things could take a turn for the worse if I didn't stop listening. The current would drag me away. My weak-minded nature was luring me to the path of least resistance, toward a really bad path, but I couldn't let it drag me away, not now. Why is this here? Do I need to cut this out entirely? 
What's more, Rimi actually sympathized with me. If that's not a green light, then what the hell is? <sighs> no way in hell! Yeah, tell that fucker off. I screamed to shatter my weak mind, to blow it straight to hell. Luckily, it seemed to have worked. Remy had even stopped crying. She lowered the hands covering her face, and then she glared at me with ice-cold eyes. This better serve a purpose. You're such a bore. Oh, okay. What's going on here? Those few words were all it took for my mind to be swallowed by a cascade of dark emotions. Also, her eyes are empty again like they were at the crucifixion. I mean, we're right by the Noah, too. Everyone's getting manipulated right now, right? And as I swung myself at Remy, with staggering force, an enormous stake burst straight up from the concrete floor. The sharp edge of the stake pierced straight into my crotch. Well, so much for that option, even if you wanted to do it. I couldn't comprehend what was going on. My legs were floating in the air. Even if I wanted to run away, I couldn't. The stake gradually tore its way farther and farther into my body. It was excruciatingly painful, but not enough to kill me. The stake continued to grow, lifting me a whole meter in the air. Any form of movement sent a jolt of pain through my groin. <laughs> I was completely unable to move. Well... Someone saved me. I cast my pleading eyes down toward Remy. But, without even looking at me, she walked straight to Nerose's side. Then, as if exhausted of all strength, she crouched to the ground. Yep, both Nerose and Rimi simply stared at me, at the mortifying display. Neither of them had any form of expression as they watched. Neither of them had any interest in saving me. I am curious as to if you were aware of this. Impalement was once a common form of torturous punishment all throughout the world. A particular characteristic of this torture is that death can take up to three days to arrive once it begins. Your own weight will gradually allow the stake to sink deeper into your body. To meet this end, it is essential to make use of a stake that isn't overly sharp thereby reducing injury to your internal organs and lengthening the period until your death. Ultimately, the execution is brought to an end once the stake pierces through your mouth or shoulder. I will be supervising this with bated breath for all three days. Why is all this necessary? Is there some reason why people have to be killed in the most gruesome, torturous way possible? A.K.A. the new gen killings? Until the moment you perish. It seems she feels the same. Rimi nodded in response to his words. Although, it would seem far more likely for you to die of blood loss, given the wounds adorning your arms and chest. Yep, he's got a point. It's a delusion, a delusional attack. That was what I told myself, obviously. In reality, I wasn't really impaled. I was still just standing in front of Noah too. I was only hallucinating. I believed that to be true. I had to believe it. Three days, 72 hours, 4,320 minutes, 259,200 seconds. If I can endure it for that long, the delusion will end. It has to. Is that your plan? If I just sleep for a bit or pass out, it'll go by a lot quicker. Those were my thoughts. But I couldn't do any of those things. The pain wouldn't let me. And that was exactly what made this such pure, unrelenting torture. I was going to go insane if this went on. Even though only a moment ago I'd been thinking about trying to endure it, I'd spiraled straight into despair. Considering the extreme amount of time left before my death, Despair was the sole emotion that hadn't drained directly out of me. Just kill me already. This ending sucks. How much time had passed? I didn't see a clock, so I had no clue. I wanted to see a clock, but I knew that if I did see one, the hands sluggishly ticking by would probably shatter my spirit completely. I clenched my teeth, 
Sweat was oozing off my body in droves. Thanks to that, my th throat had gone dry. I moistened it by swallowing the blood that was trickling in. Inside my body, I could feel the stake continuously shoving aside my internal organs as it wedged itself even deeper into me. I could feel it very clearly, like a countdown to my inevitable death. Soon enough, it arrived at my minced chest. After that, it pierced through my throat. It skewered me straight through my mouth. Is this how we end, or is there something after this? Yeah, that. And more. The pain and shock was pushing my sanity to its limits. The pain kept me in a five-minute cycle of passing out, waking up, then passing back out again. I came to understand something. Every time I fainted, my body would go limp, and the stake dug into me even faster. Naturally, the pain grew to uncomparable levels when that happened. Then it would wake me back up. Unable to move, my body would writhe in torment, then I'd pass out again to escape the pain, and the gruesome cycle would repeat itself. This is going to have a... <laughs> I don't feel like we're headed on, a, on track for the happy ending here. Even when I was conscious, I was entirely in a daze. It seemed the pain had somehow faded a little, too. My vision had gone dim. Was it nighttime? Not that it mattered, considering the lack of windows in the dome. I suppose it was probably because of how much blood I'd lost. Blood trickled from my chest and arms, albeit not a whole lot. If it kept dripping out, maybe I could die peacefully from that instead of being impaled. Realizing that, I attempted to swing around my left arm, hardly any of which remained below the elbow. But it didn't even twitch. No doubt my nerves were already dead. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, here we go. There goes the sanity. Be ba, 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 ba. Was it really a delusion? When was it going to end? Would it ever actually end? Why would it end? Is the flower bed still there? What had made me believe it was a delusion to begin with? How could I know it was a delusion? What if it was all reality? If I endured it, I'd just die anyway. Enduring it didn't mean shit. But I was enduring it anyway? That was stupid. Only a dumbass would do that. I was an idiot. Die. Not the ha-ha, kill-yourself kind. No, actually fucking die. I should die right now. I was sick of all the pain. I was sick of all the suffering. Bite your tongue off. Do that, and you'll be at peace soon after. Just let me out of here. This was all a delusion, right? This is going on for a bit. Die, die, die. For a guy with uh, reality warping powers, we uh, sure are easy to deal with. Yes, yes, die, 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 it hurts, die. Very well. My chest continued to hemorrhage. I couldn't breathe. No matter how much oxygen I tried to suck in, my throat would only make a stupid wheezing sound. I looked down, only to be met with the stake peeking through the holes in my chest. Lovely. Struggling for oxygen as my mouth flapped open and shut, I violently vomited out blood. The fact I was about to die brought me peace of mind. Any moment now, I believe. He's just been watching the whole time. It was Nerose's voice. The bastard was right in front of me. But I couldn't see him. In fact, I couldn't see a thing. Being impaled had left me in so much agony for so long that I'd completely forgotten about both him and Remy. I couldn't help but wonder if Remy was still close by, though it didn't really matter. I was too occupied with, you know, trying to breathe. For a good while now, I'd been dedicating every nerve and every last ounce of strength toward doing just that. Before you safely pass on to the next world, allow me to dispose of the girl. I wasn't exactly sure what he was talking about, nor did I have the chance to think about it. You're going to kill me? Indeed. That is what I plan. Do you have any last words? I'm sorry, Taku. I couldn't save you. And that's it. 
I heard Remy's final scream, then the sound of someone just toppling over. I imagined that Remy had just been shot and killed. I didn't feel a single pang of emotion. Something else took priority. Yeah, we, we've had, we definitely have other priorities. I returned to working on breathing. And then I felt shock at how I'd done that. What was the meaning in any of this? Why did I struggle so hard to keep on breathing? Wasn't it just too much? Something hot streamed down my cheeks. I was probably crying, but there wasn't any way to be sure of that. I tried my best to endure everything that I had dealt with so far, but so close to the three-day limit. The meaning of doing so had been entirely lost. Is the spike just going to vanish after three days? I'm sorry, Remy. I should be the one to apologize. I couldn't protect you. Yeah, there wasn't any point in living anymore. I let my body go limp. The weight of that caused my body to sink even deeper. I felt a foreign object working its way up my throat. Breathing became impossible. Something was driving itself up through me. Yes, something. It's a mystery. <laughs> What is with this stupid-ass song? I came back to my senses. The feeling of a foreign object in my throat disappeared. I wasn't impaled anymore. Jeez, why even is this? The only blood on me was from my left arm and chest. When did reality end and the delusion begin? My brain couldn't begin to process it fast enough. I didn't understand a thing about the situation. In front of me was Nerose, D-Sword raised. <laughs> Back so soon, the three days you just experienced were, in fact, but a single second in reality. So it was just a delusion. After muttering that to myself in relief, Nerose's D-sword flashed as fast as lightning. My body's top and bottom halves began to fall out of alignment. My vision fell. Yeah, that uh, whole experience probably messed us up pretty good. It sank downward, even though my legs were still standing right there. Everything above my waist toppled to the floor. My torso had been cleaved clean off. The cross-section was all too beautiful to behold. No, please don't. YouTube's gonna hate me enough for this episode. I inexplicably fixed my gaze on my lower half. It was a reality I didn't want to accept, or was it just another delusion? If it was... That would have been nice. Please be a delusion. <laughs> Taku! <laughs> Remy was calling me in a voice that seemed so, so sad. She was calling me. I wonder if the delusion sword itself, Nerose's D-sword, was in fact a delusion. Everything we're seeing here could be a delusion. I'm not sure how we're going to deal with that. <laughs> Even in that state, it will be a number of minutes before your death. As a former doctor, you have my word on that. In the meantime, allow me to extract your code sample. I crawled, dragging my body away with my right hand alone. I headed straight for Remy's voice. I want to feel you there, Remy. I have to save you, Remy. I dragged myself forward with my right hand, then again, then again. I reached out. But I had no idea where Ruby was. I didn't reach her. I didn't reach anything at all. Such an obstinate young man. Crunch. I felt my bones grind to dust. Nerose's dress shoe trampled my outstretched right hand. Or perhaps Monster would be a far more apt title. Nerose's legs wavered like a mirage in the desert. Why is this being read in a voice? The tile pattern on the floor began to blur and distort. Bottom becomes top and top becomes bottom. The floor becomes the ceiling and the ceiling becomes the floor. I find myself crawling on my stomach. A staggering amount of blood gushes out from my severed waistline, like a water faucet put on full blast. The blood is draining out of my body. And then, just like that, my organs cascade out of the opening in my arm. Lovely. 
意識がスーッと遠くなる。My consciousness surges far, far away. でも、完全には遠くなる。But I don't lose it completely. 血だまりができて、Blood starts to pull around me. 僕はそのシンクの海に身を横取り。My body is lying in a sea of crimson. ドクン。ドクン。<笑>ドクドク。鼓動する心臓が As my heart beats, 僕の目の前に転がって it rolls onto the floor in front of me, 血だまりに波紋を作り forming ripples in the bloody puddle. その波紋をぼんやり見ていたら I watch the ripples in a daze. 僕の Yummy! 形が崩れた my shape collapses. 人としての形を。I'm unable to maintain my shape as a person. Why is this being read? The boundary between myself and the world vanishes. Oh, are we gonna pull an Obi Wan Kenobi? My flesh melts. My bones warp like rubber. My eyeballs become square shaped. My inside out lungs tumble out of my mouth. This guy is really good at delusion attacks, I gotta say. My nerves are stretched out for tens of thousands of kilometers. One by one, the wrinkles of my brain slowly smooth themselves out. My body becomes a flabby blob. I dissolve into the air. My right hand stretches as if it were made of thread. What the hell? It leaves the planetarium. And like a parade float, it wanders about the Shibuya sky, whirls around Cornelius Tower, wraps around it again and again, again and again, again and again. My not together legs swell up. Glub glub. Like a water balloon. Is this all strictly necessary? Bulging out my skin grows. It makes rubbery sounds. I am Luffy from One Piece. I'm turning into liquid. Even my flesh, even my bones, they melt and clog up my calves. Then a little head springs out of my hip. What? It looks at me with white googly eyes. It's a garrow froggy. And then my head gets smashed to pieces. I don't know which head exactly. It's all smashed and pulpy, though. The building's concrete floor. I slip between the cracks in its molecules. Falling. Is this what awakening is like? Because awakening sucks. Whoosh. I splat on the ground. Goopy brain puddle. Squirmy, squirm, gushy, gush, slurpy, slurp, sticky, stick, jiggly, jiggle, bouncy, bounce, splashy, splash. Gloopy gloop, splatty splat. I'm just waiting for the delusion to end, and then we're just standing there again. I become two. Two becomes four. Four becomes eight. Eight becomes four. Two becomes eight. Four becomes four. Slowly multiply. Slowly divide. There's a lot of me. And there's none of me. 
What is me? What am I? I am what? Me? What? Here's this imagery again. What smy? What sm a? What? 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 You're more than just a delusion. <laughs> what is it? What? Huh? Look closely. Bloody hell. What is happening to our guy? Nishijo Nanami prays. Oh, she, she's with Shogun. In a hospital, admitted alongside her brother. Curled up in the corner of a waiting room, brimming with injured souls. Clutching her real brother's wrinkled hand. Enduring the pain in her right hand. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of her other brother. We're just going to go to everyone. Kusunoki Yua prays by the rubble of a collapsed building in a container that lay buried by it all. Clutching one of his anime girl figures. Uh, enduring the pain in her chest from seeing his figures desecrated by the earthquake and ensuing fires. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy who forgave her. Kishimoto Ayase prays at Sume Academy, now an evacuation shelter, makes sense, looking to the sky from the rooftop. Who will let you back on that rooftop? Clutching her paperwork book of legends, her paperback book of legends, enduring the malicious pain of the innumerable delusions, concealing the collapsed Shibuya. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy who listened to her song and her story. Yep. At Shinsen Station, on a dimly lit platform, yeah, I don't think she's gone very far. Clutching Aoi Sena's trembling hand, <laughs> enduring the pain of her injured leg, she closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy, her classmate, whom she spoke with in her inner voice. Aoi Sena prays. She doesn't seem like the type, sitting beside her father on the ground. Clutching her father's cold hand, enduring the pain of regret, having not been honest to the very end, she closes her eyes and prays. This isn't even the true ending yet, guys. Bloody hell. For the safety of the boy who tried to grant her wish, no matter how clumsily. The whole harem's here. Sakihara Rimi prays, lying on the cold floor, tightly clutching her own hands, extended toward him, enduring the tightening in her chest from when she saw him covered in wounds. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy whom she swore to protect, yet instead came to save her. We are like atomized and liquefied and everything else in between. I'm not sure how she's how we're coming back from this. You guys better pray hard. I was unable to do anything. It was you who acted. This is Shogun. 
As a result, everyone has had their eyes on you. Mutual recognition of you has long since been established. From this point forward, no, already, you are. I? I am? Who are you? I am I got dark literally The moment I heard that voice My consciousness stabilized me. The once swirling world converged all at once. <laughs> my D-sword took shape as a converging chaos. Oh guys, my theme music started. He's fucked now. I returned to my shape as myself. The world returned to its shape as the world. I am me. And I still can't stab the damn Noah. I can see clearly now, the rain is gone. All my wounds had healed. My top and bottom halves were connected. Well, that was important. I was standing on my own two feet. The pain was entirely gone. Can't we do this back to Nerose? He deserves it. You be a liquid for a while. Serenity filled my heart. You did well to overcome the delusions. I entrust you with the last of my power. I noticed Remy at the end of my vision. She was okay, she was looking at me. Tears were falling down her face <laughs> from how I treated her earlier. Don't cry. Summoning my strength, I grabbed the D-Source hilt. I ascertained its feeling. My arms worked better than ever. I had completely regenerated. My, this is quite fascinating. You. Damn monstrosity! I focused my eyes on Narose. Sure, I'm a monster. But this is... So I can rescue Rimi, so I can destroy Noah too. This is the delusion that I wished for. Nerose's response was swift. He had yet to harvest the code sample of Nishi's Yutakami. The delusion was supposed to have cornered the boy and shattered his psyche, but now the tables had turned. And that he could not allow. Nerose closed the gap between himself and Takami. Taking a specific angle, he swung his D-sword from below. With a D-sword that could cleave any known object, he diagonally carved through Takami's chest. The target's durability made no difference. Killing a person with it was as simple as slicing through a block of gelatin. With one quick swipe from Nerose, <laughs> Takami's body was split into pieces. Again? His head, right arm, and right shoulder all slid cleanly off of his body. Internal organs littered the floor, but not a single drop of blood fell with them. The lower half of Takami's body began to give way. He braced himself and managed to plant his feet. In the following moment, the cross-section of his wound began to undulate and squirm. A bubbling noise <laughs> ensued, and then he regenerated. My god, we're Namekian. Even though his body had been cleaved apart a mere second ago, already a new head, right arm, and shoulder had been born. His old head and internal organs remained where they had slid free from him. I already blocked off my sense of pain. With a single step, Takami approached Nurose. Nurose clicked his tongue, then turned over his D-sword. By virtue of casting aside your bodily form, any form whatsoever is within your means, I take it. You can thank the delusion you showed me for that. He was unable to retain his shape as a human being. He had taken in the delusion and made it his own. This was not regeneration, but replacement. Missing parts replenished, flesh and bone were produced once again, all propagating infinitely from the dust within his body. 
His shape was not fixed. Like an amoeba, like in a collection of slime. He could change himself freely. That was the reason Takami called himself a monster. Takami took yet another step toward Nerose. Nerose's frustration increased. Gripping the hilt, he thrust his D-sword at the approach of Takami. Takami's head found itself between a colossal pair of scissors. Snip! Without a brain, you can't have any more delusions now, can you? Didn't we just regrow ahead? Takami's head was crushed and split like a watermelon. Blood and gray matter burst forth. Everything above the neck was gone, and yet Takami's body remained. Regeneration, replacement, was instantaneous. As soon as his heel hit the ground, as if nothing had happened, as if he had been entirely replaced, his head returned right to where it had been without a single scratch. Nerose awakened to an understanding. He could not win this fight. Physical attacks with his D-Sword were useless. The delusional attacks denying the boy's reason for existence had been taken in and used for an alternate purpose. The current Nishijo Takami was all too removed from human normalcy. All too distorted of an existence. All too fitting as a monster. And yet, despite it all, Nerose had no intention of conceding. His next thought was to utilize Noah 2's power to bombard Takami with innumerable antiparticles. Bombardment with antiparticles could transform any known existence into negative matter, ending ultimately in self-collapse. If disruption from the surface was not viable, then collapse must be undertaken from within. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> You're on the right track. Nerose's thoughts had been read by Takami. <coughs> what? The shine of Takami's D-sword transformed from red to black. A black flame enveloped the blade. It wriggled forth, extending outward. Its shape resembled that of... We get to see it? A dark, colossal serpent. <laughs> And then it shall appear. It roamed throughout the dome as if constrained by it. Toward the ceiling, toward the floor, as though it was licking them up, as though it was scraping them away. It simply consumed. A dark colossal serpent of wicked hearts. A being capable of devouring all corrosion, shattering the wicked hearted king's body itself, and instilling heterogeneity into his homogeneity. So we're the one with the serpent. Well, at least we don't have that stupid fork anymore. The body of the colossal serpent was composed of antiparticles. I thought it was coming from Nerose. Apparently it's coming from us, or are we just about to deal with it? With a mere touch, it could send any known object into self-collapse. A torrent of destruction composed of near-infinite greed. <laughs> Can't say I'm all that fond of tentacle porn, though. Don't lie. There and then, Takami's D-sword swung, its pointed tip fixed on Nerose. Okay. Cool animations. I like it. The Dark Serpent, winding itself in a coil, curved its body like a whip. Its jaws snapped at Nerose. Such power, it can't be. Not once had Nerose ever seen such a phenomenon from a D-Sword. Okay, I, I was under the impression this was coming from his, but I guess it's coming from ours. He could not discern whether it was the hidden power of all Gigalomaniacs or merely Takami's delusion. The Dark Fangs eroded Nerose's body and he began to collapse, all too slowly, like a frog slowly dissolving in the belly of a snake. Darkness swallowed him. He felt no pain. By nature, his death should have been instant. But that was not what Takami wished for. Realizing this, Nerose's lips twisted into a derisive smile. Nerose had no fear of death. One could say that the ideals he pursued had been accomplished with the completion of Noah too. Even if you kill me, no other person can approach Noah 2. A perpetual motion machine, that is what you are dealing with. 
Its administration over humanity will last until the end of time. It does not merely sit idle and watch from afar. Rather, it is a man-made god which interferes for the sake of mankind's happiness. Nerose was God's inventor, so to speak. As long as Noah II continued to exist, mankind would not perish. And the, inter and the eternal utopia Nerose sought would become real. However, but you can approach it, can't you? What? The serpent's body wriggled and writhed with Nerose in its grasp, lifting his body into the air. If that's the case, then you're the key. Nerose was astonished. But soon enough, his face changed into an expression of pure agony. The serpent swung around his body with ease. Takumi shot a glance at Rimi. Their eyes met. Just what was Rimi feeling as she watched him? Reading her mind would have been effortless. And yet, Takumi did nothing of the sort. It seems I was able to save you after all. He quickly averted his eyes. His gaze then shifted to the still-humming Noah too, the throne of God where none could stand foot, a cradle which showed not but dreams of bliss. I'm sorry. He apologized to no one in particular. I very well might be an enemy of humanity. The eternal utopia this device would have brought, a future without conflict. Takumi would extinguish them with his own two hands. Was that right or was it wrong? Takumi could not give the answer to that. But it's pretty common in mythology. Even gods tend to slack off when women are involved. <laughs> well, he's not wrong. That's why I, too, will sacrifice the happiness of mankind out of love for a girl. Takumi, D sword in hand, bent his arms in a giant arc. He thrust it forth just like a javelin. The colossal serpent of darkness charged straight ahead. With the bait known as Nerose impaled by its tip, it flew straight toward Noah II. An enormous serpent of antiparticles capable of terminating any known object. It had no will of its own. Thus, it was not something that could have been warped nor distorted. With the greedy impulse to destroy, using Nerose as the key, the delusional barrier was easily smashed to pieces. I don't know, this seems like a pretty good ending, guys. I'm not too sure what else uh, we could be doing, doing from here. That's a Rimi sword from the look of it. Nope, never mind. That's the end of Neuroses. Okay. Now what? Oh, now we're going to have Rimi. Yep. Now we're back to the original video. The text is just moving now. There's rain. There's just been a huge explosion and the blast. It's a blast blew my body away like it was nothing more than a rag doll. Next thing I knew, I found myself lying here. Time for Rimi to stab us. Those eyes were always watching me. The stare pierced through the thick pitch black rain clouds and poured down on me like rain. Don't look at me. Yep. It's been a while since we've seen this CG. My body couldn't stop shivering, not from the chill of the rain, but rather the ice cold rubble against my back. So terribly cold. The seams word for word. A gaze pierced me from the heavens, who it belonged to I couldn't say. As if to escape it, I raised my head to look at the environment around me. There I saw a ruined city. There I saw despair. There I saw death. There I saw nothingness. Not a soul was there. Not a soul was moving. Not a soul was left alive. The only thing I could hear was the sound of the rain continuing to pour. At this rate, everything, both the living and the dead, would it all be gently embraced and washed away? How nice would it be if all of this was just a delusion? But that didn't seem to be the case. I couldn't move my body. I could only move my eyes and neck, and even then, just barely. I couldn't use that monstrous power from before. 
My body was shivering, but that was nothing more than a psychological phenomenon. I don't think the original CG mentioned the monstrous power. It wasn't happening by my own will. I didn't want my body to tremble. If I couldn't move it freely, then it wasn't my body. Or maybe I've never had free will ever since I was born. Nobody knows exactly where the soul resides. Bearing that in mind, how can anyone say that there was a soul inside this body of mine? But, Remy should be showing up any moment here. Then where exactly was I now? Was I really here? Was I anywhere at all? It's just auto-playing. I got nothing. In this shattered world, where all stood still, there she is. When all that could be heard was rain, a solitary existence began to emerge from the sea of nothingness. Who are you? You know who that is. Is your skin so pale? Because it had been numbed by the chill of the rain? Or was it because you were already dead? And yet the girl wasn't shivering. And those eyes of hers, nearly hidden by her bangs. I half expected it to be someone else. Don't look at me. <laughs> One of the other five women. They look so terribly sad. Maybe Ayase, but it's not. It's Remy. They looked as if they held a hint of madness. They looked as if they reflected nothing. I feel like some of this text is a little different. If she and I were the only ones left in the world, if we stared into each other's eyes like this for all eternity, would my world be reduced to the reflection in her eyes? Would her world be reduced to the reflection in my eyes? The only thing reflected in her eyes was me. The only thing reflected in my eyes was her. When I thought of it that way, the world immediately seemed so much smaller. Yeah, hey. Suddenly a flash of static reached my ears. One endlessly beautiful, yet deeply discordant. She lowered her head and spread her arms wide. Yep, she's going to summon her swords, almost as if preparing to take off, to soar high above the rain clouds. Or as if trying to catch all of the falling rain. All that's watching you is a delusion. Yeah, some of this text is a little different. Stuff that wasn't said the first time. From where I was on the ground, I couldn't see the expression on that lowered head of hers. Behind this thin veil of rain, just what kind of face are you making? Yep. Okay, that is a slightly different animation. I'll put you to rest now. An angel? Were those dancing feathers of light blessing me, or...? Yeah, I'm curious how these swords fit together and move the way they move. Because there's technically two swords. Ah, I see. I finally understand. She's going to use that to kill me. The girl slowly kneeled to the ground before my collapsed body. With her head still lowered, she gently took my own in her hands. I surrendered my body to her grasp. I was just relieved that she wasn't looking at me. I'll put you to rest now. In my ear I heard a whisper, garbled by static. It was as beautiful as it was discordant. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Why are we hearing static? There shouldn't be any more rucksack guys. We destroyed the Noah 2 thing. Get your static out of here. You're sorry you're so sorry. Why is it sitting on this? Do I get to actually move now? There's nothing to apologize for. Oh, I'm in, I'm in control again. If I don't disappear, the other me, the real me, will die. So that's why I'm okay with this. Again, this is what I suspected. Oh no, it's back to auto. In fact, I'm really glad that I get to be erased by you. It's not a bad end for a monster like me. I don't have any regrets. Why did it just pause in the middle? Why does it do that? A warm, soft, gentle, sweet sensation. So as we suspected, she's killing this Takami. Yeah, the shivering stopped. Soft breath tickled my cheeks. Are we going to save anyone? I'm pretty sure Shogun is pretty far gone. Suddenly I sent something against my chest. The large sword she held tore through my skin, bore to my flesh, weaved through my bones, and sank to the center of my body. But gifted with the anesthesia of her kiss, I no longer felt any pain. 
I would never have imagined that I would get such a kind death. Just the thought of it broke my heart, leaving me on the verge of tears. Game the hell over, I'm guessing. Trying to hide them, I looked past the girl's head and up toward the ashen sky, where the rain continued to pour down. And that's a credit roll! Dang, well... I mean, we got an ending of some kind. We didn't get the good ending. Hopefully the good ending doesn't have quite as much of the uh, sexual assault this one did. Bloody hell, I, don't, I, wonder one, I wonder what's with that. I remember Ayase saying something about we actually have to be sort of dark-hearted. Or something along those lines, the wicked-heartedness. We flash back to a little bit of it. Does that tie into that or something? Was Noah messing with us? Like, that seemed like a completely unnecessary scene. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, I got no problem with uh, adult themes when they're necessary, but bloody hell. So, anyway. Yeah, I guess we, uh, we won? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I guess uh, next time... Next time we're gonna get some endings. Next time we're gonna start from the beginning and see what the actual frickin' delusions do. Because like I said, my understanding is that when you finish the game, now the delusions will have some sort of context. It may not be much, it might just be yes or no, but at least now we'll have to go and do them because that's how we unlock other endings, is by going down different delusion paths. Hmm, I, I think there's also an achievement for going all good delusion and all bad delusion, too, so who knows how many endings this thing has. We'll try to pack as much content into this Let's Play as I can. Because, again, yes, we've hit an ending, but obviously there's way more in this game than we've seen so far, including what I have to assume is a true ending. I'm also going to see how maybe some other YouTube channels handled that whole assault scene. <laughs> Did it get censored? Did it get cut? Is YouTube okay with it? Because it's not quite... It doesn't cross a line? I don't know. Again, it doesn't particularly bother me. It's just weird. Anyway. Committee of Zero. That's the patch I'm using, too. I wonder if that scene would have been in there without the patch. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll have to see. What happens next? I don't know who the uh, first end is going to be. I know in Steins Gate, I think the first ending divergence you could get was Suzuha's. And then it was Ferris, and then it was Luca? I think that's right. And then, of course, there was um, Mayushi's, and then there was the... I guess the Kirus Kirisu's endings, the Makise ending. There was the Makise ending, and then there was the actual true ending. So I'll have to grab that non-spoiler guide, and we'll see what comes next. In the meantime, achievement, Silent Sky, reached ending A. That ending sucks balls. Extra, CG library is now available. Sound library is now available. Movie library is now available. Shortcut is now available. Oh, do I get to chapter select? So what do we got going on? <laughs> Groucho soft mind doors. Perfect. Uh, total play time, 36 hours. Album achievement rate. Whose eyes are those eyes? I've only seen 33% of the whose eyes are those eyes. Also, excuse me, nine endings. Dang. How come the bad ending didn't register? I thought that was a, an actual official ending. Okay, so one ending for every girl. The good ending. What's the missing ending? Maybe the bad ending. Maybe I have to go back and get it again? I don't know. I, I guess I'm forgetting one. Huh. Also, enter password. What's that about? Do I have to unlock something? Or is this just... Or is this just window dressing. It's probably just window dressing now that I think about it. Uh, config, continue, start, none of that matters. 
But uh, yeah, next time we will start from the beginning. We will actually start picking delusions. And we will see where we go from there. Uh, still some mysteries. Still some holes that have yet to be filled. Still some character development to happen. And uh, probably some more plot twists. I'm sure the true ending is going to hit us with some stuff. So I hope to see you around for that. Take care. And I will see you guys around. I hope you're enjoying the Let's Play. Make sure you click all the things. I keep uh, forgetting to tell you to do that or not bothering because I'm too lazy. But come on, help me out. Put in some comments. Throw me some likes. Come visit me on Twitch. I want to meet you. I want to say hi. <laughs> I want you to give me uh, the opportunity to apologize for all the horrible things that I've subjected you to in this Let's Play. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>